kidding. Hey, welcome to the Collector's Catacomb, episode number 17. We're going to talk about vintage advertising tonight, amongst uh, some other things. Who knows what we'll find out tonight. But um, no guests this week, just uh, the panel talking about advertising. We get together every week on Thursday at uh, 9.30 p.m. We talk about uh, old stuff, new stuff, anything that people collect, the collectors, and all of the history behind it all. That's what we're here to uh, discuss with uh, all our viewers and amongst ourselves. So thanks for tuning in with us. Uh, without further ado, my name is Eric Castle. I go by TRR, Tickers or Relics, Tickers or Retail. Um, I manage the AlliedMilitaryForum.com. I run the SourcingForum.com. And um, I'm a military collector, basically. I collect some other things as well. But um, that's the, uh, the to what I collect specifically is uh, military. So um, we've got a great panel with us here tonight. I think. Dan might or might not get with us. I don't know. He is off um, well, geeking out on Star Wars or something, right? I think is where he's at yep. tonight. Yep. So um, he, he's going to try to tune in with us. We'll see if he can get his stuff working. But we've got uh, some other great panel members with us tonight. We'll go ahead and get yourself introduced. Drew, the California picker. Tell the folks about yourself, Drew. Hey guys, it's Drew the California Picker. I have a YouTube channel called California Pickin'. I also have a Facebook page called The California Picker. And my specialty is art, antiques, and antiquities, fine vintage collectibles. So if you have any cool questions, shoot them my way. Good to be here. Awesome, Drew. Thanks for being with us tonight. Then we got Eric Kaishlin, goes by Mason K. He's one of my moderators over on the Allied Military Forum. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Uh, my name is Eric Kaishlin. Uh, I have a Facebook page by the name of Military Collectors of Delaware Valley. Valley. Uh, my main interest is uh, military collectibles uh, ranging from Spanish-American War to Vietnam. Um, and I collect a few other things here and there, you know, whatever tickles my fancy. Awesome, Eric. Great to have you here tonight. And then, of course, our master of ceremonies, we got Sean Cool Toads. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Sean. I am Cool Toads. Uh, I have a channel here on YouTube, and that's Cool Toads as well. And I have a page on Facebook that's Cool Toads Pad. And um, I have a show on Friday night, and that's at 5 o'clock Pacific. Uh, called the Toadcast. We are having a special Toadcast on Cinco de Mayo. Um, right along the same lines as the St. Patrick's Day one. So, same rules apply, so come on over. That sound um, awesome, salesman-like. <laughs> hey, no worries, man. No worries. I always like popping in on your uh, show. Come on down. So, <laughs> so who, wants to, uh, who wants to kick our advertisement off? for the evening. Uh, got, go for it. What, got Drew or Eric. Come on, you two uh, duke it out. I'll jump off if uh, Drew doesn't mind. No, go for it. All right. There we go. Uh, you didn't so speak I, up quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm not a huge ephemera collector. I don't specifically seek out any type of advertising, but, you know, along the way you kind of pick up things here and there. Um, so, you know, like I said, one of my main interests is military. Uh, um, I also have an interest in, uh, you know, Boy Scout related items. I was in the Scouts for about uh, eight or so years, and I come from a family of, uh, uh, you know, my grandfather, my cousins, all were in the Scouts. So, you know, it's kind of something that, you know, was part of my childhood. So I like to, you know, whenever I see something, I'll pick it up here and there. So I figured, you know, I'd kick off with the issue of Boy's Life. Um, and this is from March of 1956. So, you know, I, I just kind of earmarked a couple uh, advertisements in here that I thought, you know, at least interest me. Um, the first one, which is on the first page, is an old advertisement for Pepsi. And I just thought it was cool because it shows the, uh, uh, hopefully that comes through. Yeah, so a couple scouts, uh, it looks like they're doing a, uh, I don't know if they're doing model airplane or you know something like that, but you know I just thought it was a nice old vintage 50s era 
almost a Norman Rockwell esque, uh, you know, picture of some scouts and you know, kind of tugs on my heartstrings. So I thought that was pretty cool. And there's the the Pepsi logo at the bottom there. Oh, nice! I and, like uh, a lot of the wartime advertising. Yeah, well, that's a lot of a lot of the other stuff I have is wartime, and that's you know, they're they they interest me even more. But I, this isn't really that interesting. But it's just more. Here's your typical teenage boy, and what do they need? <laughs> nice tube of clear so. <laughs> so I just thought uh, that was pretty funny. Yeah. I, I just thought that was pretty funny, you know. Uh, of course, you're gonna find in, uh, you know, Boys Life magazine, uh, you know, advertisement for, you know, who'd believe I was em ever embarrassed by pimples, and that's because he used clear itself. So, and I just thought that was funny, but so that was the Boys Life. It's the only, it's actually one of the only copies I have, or I, I have a couple copies, but it was the only one that had, you know, actually a, a, some pretty nice advertisement in it. So, um, so next is uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nope, no problem. Uh, here's a copy of Life magazine from uh, September 1950. <laughs> so, oh, my. I, I originally picked this one up because it was um, it has the air, it says Air War in color, so it had some you know pretty interesting photos in color of uh, the Korean War. But you know, of course, there's going to be some you know pretty interesting advertising in here, you know, from the period. Um. This one I like just because it's a uh, you know it, look, it's a Norman Rockwell. Let me just make sure that that can be seen. So, Norman Rock, Rockwell uh, illustration for Maxwell House. So, I just thought that was pretty cool. It's kind of very very uh, you know period. You know Norman Rockwell. You know who, who was one of the biggest illustrators at the time. And you know I just thought that was a pretty pretty interesting nice color you know advertisement there. You know the Maxwell House uh, canisters at the bottom. Um, yeah, Norman Rockwell. He did so much, just great Americana advertising. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'd be curious to see. I wonder what the stats on how many pieces Norman Rockwell did. I you know when I was researching that one, I, you know, I was looking it up too, and I was just I was shocked at how many, you know companies he contracted with you know there was, there was at least five or six that he contracted with and you know did advertisements for them so uh, you know I didn't realize that he was that you know you always see the coke ads and you know things like that but I didn't realize that it extended out even further beyond that right um, so here's another little classic Lee and you know again a lot of these you know a lot of these they, they're definitely um, you know they have that Norman Rockwell look to them but you know you can tell that it's not him so yeah, you can tell a lot of artists were inspired by that look and you know kind of shows in, in the artwork that they used but it's like this it's got like you know around the town you, know, you got the nice guy wearing the all denim outfit there you know trying to look like a cowboy um, and they're at the uh, the county's fair so I just thought that was a pretty interesting one nice color graphics See that comes he, yeah, Norman. Just the quick fact: Norman Rockwell produced more than four thousand original works. Really? In wow! His life. Wow! Hey, you really? That is just. I mean, it, that's hard to fathom when you think about most artists. You know, a few hundred, maybe a thousand pieces. Yeah. You know, and that's a lot. You think he produced more than four thousand original pieces. He was so the he Stephen. Was like, he was he was the Stephen King of artistry or of uh, illustration. <laughs> it seems like Stephen King pops out a book every uh, every week. It seems like he was long out his lines. Yeah. And those were fin those were finished pieces. You know, he wasn't yeah. like into leaving them half done or sketchy. He was really a painter's painter. Yeah. Right. Well, he created the first 321 covers for the Saturday Evening Post. Right. Wow. I didn't realize it was that. And he also, I believe. Yeah, I mean, we could almost we could almost do a whole show on artists. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, think he, yeah. I think he also uh, reproduced this one German image of Santa Claus, and that's that's the image that we all know Santa Claus as being the big guy with the rosy cheeks and the big. I think he's responsible for that. Uh, I, I, I've read that. I think it predates Rockwell. I, I've heard, you know, because even even people say that Coke 
um, designed what Santa Claus is known to look like today. But apparently, there's uh, images of you know of Santa Claus that predates the Coke advertisements. You know, even back to the 1800s. But yeah. as far as the robust, rosy-cheeked, you know, very well could be Rockwell that you know kind of brought that 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 image out. Yeah, I think there was a German guy who did it first, and then I think I think Rockwell might have made him a little chubbier. I, I can't remember okay. the exact story, but. But since he's so widely uh, published and stuff, he had the most impact, I guess, on what the image looked like. Oh, yeah, absolutely, I would imagine, yeah. And talk about, I don't think anything has ever been more mass-marketed uh, than Christmas. I mean, that's the <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate, ultimate advertising gimmick. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, I spend, every year I still spend... Uh, Hundreds of dollars on lights and you know cards and you know thing that's every year you know so yeah, definitely uh, definitely yeah. a, a advertiser's uh, dream <laughs> when yeah, Christmas can, comes around. Yeah, you can imagine because I think the retailers make about eighty percent of their money or something at Christmas yeah. time or some yeah. crazy amount. Um, all right, well, just kind of a couple more uh, pieces so. Here's a nice um, military-themed advertisement, and it's for the military. Um, so you know, you got two gentlemen walking down. Uh, you know, this is for the Army and Air Force, and they're wearing Army uniform and Air Force uniform. Um, you know, this is nice because the the Air Force, uh, you know, had only adopted the dress blues. You know, maybe a few years before that. You know, prior to that, they were part of the Army and were still wearing. You know. The same uniform that you see this uh, soldier over here wearing. So, you know, it's a nice little kind of a transitional advertisement from uh, when the Air Force, uh, only three years prior, separated from the Army. So I just thought that was pretty cool, you know. And it goes right with my my collecting interests, obviously. So, and you can see at the bottom the uh, recruitment. So cool. another one, another one. This is you know more military theme. This is uh, another issue of Life, and this is from uh, October 1945. So this is you know right after the war ended. Um, so the first one for Bell Telephone, and you know you have a GI holding up the phone, and you know I'm sure a lot of GIs were making that phone call home, or you know trying to get in touch with uh, their family once they you know came back home. Uh, let them know that they're safe and sound, and you know, should be home shortly once they get discharged. So I just thought that was pretty cool. Kind of speaks to the era. Uh, next one. And again, you know, kind of along the military theme, right after World War II. So here's a advertisement for Pontiac. And it says, worth a closer look, during wartime, more Pontiac owners have discovered the lasting quality of their cars. With a minimum of maintenance, expense, and worry, Pontiac delivered a brand of dependable service which pleased the most exacting owners. So they're kind of using the war as a, you know, a way to kind of pull in some uh, customers, you know, just saying that they're, they, mm -hmm. they were producing quality vehicles well, during wartime. Right. I'll make Ian's Martin happy because she was all excited about vintage car ads. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's another one in here that I really like. That's probably one of my favorites. It's uh, you know, vehicle related too. Yeah, and I, uh, I've got some too that I'll show Andy. So don't worry. Just because Dan's <laughs> not here. All right. She so here's one. Disappointed. I think she just wanted to see Dan, but <laughs> blaming it on the ads. So here's a ad, ad for Sudabaker, and again, you have a nice GI wearing an M1 helmet, and uh, it's talking about the uh, the champion, the Sudabaker champion, and then below, they actually show Sudabaker made what was called a, a weasel, and this was a, uh, you know, amphibious vehicle that was used by the military, and it was actually used by um, uh, the first special forces, uh, if you're not familiar with who, who they are, they're kind of the precursor, precursor um, to the special forces as we know them today. So, yeah, I just thought that was pretty cool. You know, we have the GI there, Studebaker, and, uh, you know, they're kind of showing, again, a military theme, you know, being right after the war. So, 
It kind of goes right in line with that. And the last one for this magazine. This one was I thought was kind of humorous. So here, here's an advertisement for a nice two-pager for uh, Goodyear. And, and the interesting part about this was it kind of talks about how, you know, basically Goodyear is saying uh, that the the um, the 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 blimp was going to kind of become a a way of traveling and you know in the future and I, I don't know about you but I haven't seen I haven't traveled nor do I often see you know blimps flying over <laughs> um, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny you know they're kind of saying this is the next wave to for America to kind of own the airways and you know obviously it went completely different from that because uh, you know they went with aircraft as we know them today, airplanes that rather than going with the, uh, you know, the, the blimp option. So, I thought that was pretty funny. That dovetails nicely into the advertising because later on they would put their name on it. Oh yeah, a good year blimp right there. Yeah. <laughs> around and, you know, you couldn't help but look up and say, "There's the good good year blimp." Yeah, and then kind of over here they're showing you know all the amenities that you're gonna find, uh, you know, top. Top of the line food, uh, you know, things like that. So I just thought that was pretty interesting. You know, kind of. Yeah, they probably only turned them into the Goodyear blimps because they bought a bunch of these things thinking <laughs> that was going to be the next one to travel and didn't know what else to do with them once nah, the airplanes yeah. took off. You know? Like, oh crap, what do we do now? I think there was a problem with the uh, yeah. the hydrogen, hydrogen, <laughs> the gas they put in in the in the uh, Hindenburg. But I, I heard originally when you used to fly on a blimp. There'd be a steward, like a, a guy for each little area, and his job was to put out your cigarette in some a bowl of water. <laughs> and he would, he would stand there right next to the guests as they would smoke, and then if you wanted to extinguish your thing, you'd be, be put it in this little bowl that had some water on it. He would basically get rid of it or what have you because you know you don't want to lit the yeah. cigarette on it. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We saw how that how that went down. It didn't yeah. end well. <laughs> um, so so going back a little further, this is a copy of American Legion from September 1929. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, I originally picked these up, uh, you know, again for the military theme. My, my, you know, my goal was eventually to have these framed and kind of you know hang them on the wall. But fortunately, wall space is limited. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. They have some nice uh, Lucky Strike advertisements on the reverse. And it, it definitely a sign of the times compared to now. It says, to keep a slender figure no one cannot deny, reach for a Lucky Strike instead of a sweet. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. So, you know, and, and instead of uh, eating, you know, smoke a cigarette and you'll uh, suppress your hunger. So... <laughs> and, you don't have any doctor-recommended camels, do you? No, I don't. But I, I mean, again, along the same lines, we have the another lucky strike. You know, to show a, a kind of an overweight gentleman here, and you know, more slender, and you know, <laughs> straight from the shoulder. When tempted to overindulge, reach for a lucky strike. Uh, it's a shame they don't have the doctor recommended. That would be awesome. But you know, I guess that was more of a, a camel thing rather than a lucky strike. But, yeah, yeah, I'm trying. I'm scrolling through my ads right now. I'm looking. I I could have swore that I've got one. Well, I hope you do. I would love to see that. They're they're the ones that they always crack with that and the um the doctors who recommend drinking, you know, giving babies Coke, Coca Cola and things like that. Those are those are always my favorite. Um so this is another American Legion. This is March of nineteen twenty nine. And um you know, again, military theme. I just thought this was interesting. Uh you know, this is a uh, a soldier advertising a mattress. So uh the soldier's name was Lemuel Bowles. And he's advertising Simmons mattress, so I just thought that was pretty interesting. You know, talk about you know where am I going to put my name, and you know how can I make a couple dollars uh, yeah. while I advertise for a mattress company? <laughs> um, another one in here. Again, we got a nice Babe Ruth advertisement. You know, for uh, you know, open letter from Babe Ruth, and he's talking about sending away for a booklet that he's you know 
obviously been a part of uh, you know putting together, and it's more for like uh, athletic directors and things like that. So I just thought that was pretty cool. You know, definitely again part of the era, Babe Ruth era. Um, and here we have our Black Americana, and it's for oh, that's cool. Old gold cigarettes, and actually, this is uh, Eddie Cantor, who was a uh, a co comedian, and he's in you know blackface. Um, and he says, "Folks, how can I make a whoopee up here when down in front the coffers are whooping?" And so he's basically saying, "Smoke old golds because they don't make you cough." But that's also how it's interesting. And here's my favorite one of you know all of them. This was a nice piece. This is uh, Amelia Earhart advertising Lucky Strikes. So this is a pretty famous uh, one. I'm sure other people have seen this, but um, I just thought it was, you know, pretty cool. Um, apparently, uh, when she advertised for Lucky Strikes, she, she apparently had a pack of Lucky Strikes on the Friendship when she crossed the Atlantic, and she actually wasn't a um, a smoker. She was kind of like a uh, uh, an occasional smoker, and I think it was only because she was advertising, you know, for Lucky Strike. And then, actually, apparently, she lost a deal with uh, McCall's magazine because of her endorsement. So, I just thought it was really interesting. You know, a nice, nice color graphic. You know, twenties era, and you know, who was more famous at that time than Amelia Earhart? So, right. Um, and then, to kind of continue with the the military theme. So, um, you know, this is a little more different type of advertising, and um, uh, you know. The military, obviously, I'm sure, you know, even today you'll see commercials or billboards for, you know, enlisting in the Army and, you know, things like that. So this was a nice piece I actually picked up. Um, it's rather large. I picked this up at a, a, a flea market for 30 bucks, And I hope we can get the whole thing in the frame. I'm going to try and do, like, a wide shot and then zoom in and kind of show you, you know, all the pieces of it. But basically, it's an advertisement for enlisting in the army. It says, you know, men want for the army, and then it's got a picture of uh, two soldiers, uh, one in the cavalry on horseback, and then an infantryman uh, standing on the side with a bugle. And you can tell that because the cavalry yellow would signify cavalry, and then uh, blue signifying infantry. And then typically, what you would see at the bottom, which is unfortunately cut off here, is um, a place of enlistment. So you would, they would actually have written on the bottom there the location and address where you can go and enlist in the army. Um, so these were nice. It's kind of, I'm guessing it's kind of a litho type um, printing. I'm not, you know, much of a, uh, um, you know, I don't have too much knowledge when it comes to this. I'm sure Drew could probably, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm kind of guessing that's what this might be, litho or yeah, yeah, probably a time period. yeah, stone litho. If you look at it with a loop, it, it's not going to have any little dots and. Okay. There's some type of offset litho or lithograph stone process. Yeah, that's cool. Thirty and, uh, bucks. Wow. Yeah, thirty bucks framed. The only thing I had to do was the glass was broken, so I had to get a you know get a new piece of glass. So I went out and got some UV resistant glass and you know just frame you know just put kept the original frame. I like the age to it, you know. Just curious, how much did you pay for the glass? Uh, I think it was like ten bucks or something like that. For, that's it for yeah. that size. Yeah. Yeah. Is it real glass? I, I, I bought this like uh, I want to say like eight years ago or so, and there's a glass place right around the corner from me. So, um, you know, I didn't go with too thick of a piece of glass. So I'm guessing that's how I kind of saved some money there. But um, th that's just for the history aspect. Uh, so the artist is uh, Michael P. Whalen, and he actually did quite a you know a series of recruitment posters. Um, so I, you know, I just wanted to put the artist name out there in case anybody wanted to kind of search and. You know, find out more about them. Unfortunately, I couldn't find much online. Um, so, one of the biggest advertising, uh, or I guess one of the biggest things going on during World War One was the um, the Liberty Loan, and basically, this was uh, you know what we know as um, um, savings bonds today. You know, it's kind of along the same lines. So, you know, the government needed money to go to war. So you would see these, you know, advertisements, um, you know, posted everywhere. And there was actually four, four Liberty, Liberty loan bonds, um, and there was a fifth, a Victory loan, which, you know, uh, you know, postdated the uh, the end of World War One. But um, I actually I acquired two of the or three of these posters 
uh, the one I just shown, and then two other ones, um, through a woman who contacted me on Craigslist, and she had about 20 of these all rolled up. They were sitting in an attic in her uh, her mother's house, and she wanted to sell them. And it, you know, I felt bad because I'm like, you don't realize what you have in your hands here. There's you know, there's a lot of money there. And I know at the time I couldn't afford it, so what I did was I said, look, I'll help you price them out, um, but the, the the one thing I'm asking for in return, uh, or actually it turned out I'll help her price them out, and I helped her sell them, and then the only thing I wanted in return was to be able to keep one of the posters. So so the one I just shown and another smaller one I, I paid for, but this is what I got for kind of the fruits of my labor. And so it's uh, it says beat back to Hun, and... <laughs> With Liberty Bonds, so basically, nice. you know, the Hun. Nice. They were comparing the Germans at the time to the Hun, and then the the, the picture there is just amazing. Because because you imagine today seeing something like this, oh, the right. outrage, you know, the outrage or the uh, outcry that would happen as a result. So what you have is a German oh, here wearing a pickle ob with a bloody bayonet, blood on his hands, and you know, they're, they're just they're showing the Germans as, sa as these savages, and so it's just a really, you know, really. Vibrant colors and just uh, the the image itself is you know kind of you know I, I can't even put it into words. <laughs> it's yeah. just you know you, you don't you don't see it you won't see it's something awesome. like this again. Yeah, yeah exactly. Kind of got a Frankenstein look almost. He does. He's got, like green, he's got the green. He's got the green yeah. eyes, really green. Yeah. You know, the zombie esque <laughs> eyes. You know, kind of Forrest Karloff looking. Yeah, it is. It is. And the, uh, it's got the artist's signature down here, and his name was um, uh, Frederick Strothman. And he actually, a um, little information on him, uh, he was actually born in Philadelphia, so that has a connection to me. I'm originally from Philly. Uh, I live outside of Philly now. And he was an illustrator and cart or cartoonist during a time period, and uh, some of his works appeared in Harper's Magazine. So this one specifically would date to about 1918. Uh, the one men wanted for the army would date to the 1910-1917 time frame. Um, so you know, again, it's it's one of the biggest uh, advertising campaigns you know of the period. So I just thought it kind of went along with that advertising theme that we were trying to uh, you know share tonight. So right, no, nah, very uh, cool, man. It's you know, just to see the different types of advertising. Everything wasn't just a magazine back then, you know. Absolutely. But that's that wraps up what you I have. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm kind of limited on my uh, my ephemera, so you know, uh, those are the pieces I thought were interesting. I hope everybody else found them interesting as well. Heck yeah! <clears throat> Especially the starving the pimples. <laughs> the picture and stuff it just I don't know it struck me as super funny I don't know why <laughs> yeah, one, one more time just for uh, for Sean <laughs> <laughs> alright very there cool man well hey yeah <laughs> oh, <sorry. There> <laughs> <it is. laughs> oh man. I didn't know I didn't know oh, Claire, yeah, I didn't know Claire so was that old I didn't know either, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I, they didn't show that. They didn't, they didn't show that on. Uh, that was 1956. Oh, you, didn't yeah. see, you didn't see the Beave using Clearasil on uh, Leave It to Beaver, so <laughs> or Eddie Munster or <laughs> Eddie Munster. <laughs> yeah. I, always wondered, I, always, I always wondered about that. What if you had broke out in pimples or something, and you're supposed to do some big show. I guess they just cover it up in some way. They didn't have airbrushing, I don't think, and not live. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Slap some spackle on it and get out there. There you go. <laughs> uh, I mean, they've been doing Photoshop ever since there was pictures. I mean, they were chopping up damn tin types and stuff and putting things together back in the day, you know? They were using that during World War II with pictures of Hitler and, you know, trying to superimpose them and you know other situations, and you know even even predating that. So yeah, it's Ooh. been around for a while. But Ooh. but you're talking about live television. I'm I'm thinking of uh, you know you're talking about makeup. I keep thinking of um, uh, the Tin Man from uh, Wizard of Oz. Who was the original uh, Buddy? Uh, Buddy Epson. Buddy Epson, and got sick from all of the uh, or the type of makeup they use. So that right there, that goes to show you, you know, if they 
use that on him, what else were they using on other people to cover up, you know, blemishes and things like that that probably had, you know, even worse effect than, you know, the stuff that they're using nowadays? Yeah, he was being suffocated by the, uh, the silver covering. Yeah. And silver had, that probably had some mercury in it or whatever. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Some whatever in there. <laughs> Not good for him. So, yeah, he... He got sick and he couldn't do the movie, and then it went to Jack Haley. Uh, yep. Jack Haley, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, hey Drew, what do you got for us, man? Okay. Well, some of you guys aren't old enough to recognize this, but this is a. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, Drew. Some of us, anything before the '80s, we're not going to recognize. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> These these are these are what's called apple cr apple or orange crate labels, and they were created by the people, the farmers, um, I guess, who wanted to brand their own farms and their own you know uh, produce, and they were very well done. You can see there, it's really great colors, great graphics, um, you know, always just such great superior graphics and very iconographic for the time. And this one is um, Big Western Vegetables out of California somewhere. And uh, I really like these. There's a whole subgenre of people that collect these. Sometimes they have the pictures of the fruit or the apples or the oranges. But uh, they're always very bright and colorful like this. And uh, sometimes you'll see these pasted on old um, suitcases and things. People like to to laminate these to some some stuff and just really very yeah, cool that's stuff. Pretty cool. It's, I guess it's kind of in the same genre as the ones that collect the old beer bottle labels. I, I've sold a lot of beer bottle labels in the past. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a whole community out there that collects those labels. So I would assume that would be uh, that would be right along the same lines that they would collect the fruit crate labels. You know. Yeah. yeah. And even the fruit crates with the labels on them because those. You know, crates do well, um, and that's a whole subgenre right there. I have a few more. I didn't didn't dig them out for tonight, but this next one is very cool. Mag. By the way, I have the flu, so I'm sounding pretty froggy right now. Not quite California. That's all I'm saying. Not quite myself, but um, this is a travel magazine called The Traveler, 1955-56. And this is, you know, after the war and everything, you know, basically advertisers were saying, look, look, families, you know, get in your car and go places and or take the bus or the plane or what, what have you and go different places with your family. And that's what this is all about. And on the back cover is a really great ad for Greyhound buses. That's that classic double-decker Greyhound bus. I love that thing. Oh, yeah. That shows you the inside here. I wonder what it was like there to be on that upper level. I thought that's very cool. You could see out this top window as you drive down. Really unique. They don't make double-decker buses anymore. And uh, then going into the magazine, there's just tons and tons of advertisements, which is great for us tonight because I don't have to change magazines. There's a lot of stuff in here. This one's for Gray Line. So we had Greyhound and we had Gray Line. And um, generic version. Some gasoline were some of the some of the advertisements. Gasoline automobilia back then. So nice big ad for Texaco. This guy would run out, for all you kids, this guy would run out and fill your, he'd say, can I fill your air and do your water, sir? And he would, <laughs> full, he would fully serve your automobile when you would go in for gas. So he would check the air, the water, and he'd fill your gas, the oil. And that was called full, full serve. And now I believe the, the Texaco Sky Chief line is one of the more collectible uh, Texaco items. Is the stuff that mentions Sky Chief. Ah, is that what and that? I, is that what, don't quote me, but I believe that was like 
you know, one of the brands of fuel, kind of like you get Tektron now and all this crazy stuff. And Sky Chief is supposed to be the, you know, the best thing out there. Isn't it funny, like, certain advertisements, they'll, they'll introduce, like, a, an element in their own product, like Tecrolene. Like, are, we're supposed to know what Tecrolene is. I mean, <laughs> oh, we have Tecrolene, or, or, um, oh, you choose some diamonds. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or certs, certs, certs has Retsin. I mean, you've got to have Retsin if you're going to, you know? <laughs> People were so gullible back then. They didn't know jack squat, and so these advertisers, these advertisers would throw in little key words like that. And uh, whoa, uh, let's see, what do we else we got here? Um, I don't have the pages marked, but uh, let's just go go here. And then at the back, another travel, some type of travel advertisement. Sitting back, and I think that's that. Well, that's also bus travel. So apparently, this magazine was pushing bus travel. I was going to say, I looks pretty comfy for a bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where's the Where's the fat, smelly guy you get stuck next to? <laughs> <laughs> and next, you're not going to see one of these on anybody else's channel. This is an awesome item here. This is an original Tournament of Roses Parade program from 19, I think it's 34. I'll have to check when we go inside. But this is the original envelope that it came in, and you would receive this in the mail, and it would have pictures of floats for the New Year's Day Parade here in Pasadena. This is a real big deal. And when I came across this, I couldn't even believe how pristine. This is the most pristine item I probably own in my whole collection. And I'm going to take it out really carefully because it doesn't have, it doesn't have like any creases at all. Look how vibrant this is, you guys. That's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. super bright. Wow. 1930. 1939. Mm. That, that's pretty. That's pretty, pretty darn bright for a uh, yeah. uh, 1939. Not, I mean, if you look at it, I don't know if you can see, but there is not what. It's like nobody even opened it. And by the way, the the um the envelope had nobody's address on it, so it might not have ever been sent to anybody. This might have been from somebody who worked. Might the, just, yeah, but yeah, dead stock. Something. something like that. That's You'll cool, never man. find one this pristine. And then we got the sun kissed. Great ad in the back with the mountains in the background. Wow, wow look at that. Just like the day it was printed. Just so <laughs> colorful. It's making me Beautiful. thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> me too. And then I will try to go through this really carefully. I don't even like to open this up, but this is for Angie Martin. There's there you your go. ad for your. <laughs> Your car. <laughs> That's a cool lad, man. Yeah. And then, yeah. just to show you that this is, I mean, there's some several ads in here, but the main thrust of this thing was to show you the different floats from around. Now, this isn't advertising, but these are floats that you would have in your parade from the different cities. And there we see oh, wow. Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Glendale. Oh, that's cool, man. Isn't that awesome? This is this is such an incredible uh, brochure, magazine, whatever you want to call it. Hey, Brian is in the house, and so is uh, Bomberger, that guy. He's here too. Oh. These floats wow, haven't been these floats have never been seen on YouTube, so this is the first time, you guys. Oh my gosh, we got a float exclusive here on the Collector's right. Catacomb. <laughs> yep. And then lastly, hold on a second. <coughs> if you I like what you see tonight, you can donate. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I got a I got an outpost or Eric. 
Oh, wow. It doesn't even fit, doesn't even fit on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, y'all are going to make me go get a poster, aren't you? <laughs> this thing is a framed lithograph poster from the Monaco Grand Prix, 1930. Uh, wow. Yeah, 1931. And this is a vintage reproduction of that from 1971. And I looked for a loop, and you don't see any dots, so I knew it was a litho. Nice saturated color. And the original artist is right there. Let's see, where is it? Right there. His name is Falcucci, some famous Italian uh, artist doing poster art. And just a great big poster advertising for the race that they run every year in Monaco. It's got an Art Deco look to it almost. Yeah, very much so. Very Art Modern, Art Deco, Streamlined. Anything automotive sells really well. But the graphics on this thing is just insane. I don't know if you're picking up on that. Yeah. Yeah, so I just did a video of that. If you'd like to go see the uh, full version, I just posted it just a little while ago. And that's all I got in advertising for tonight. That's it? Drew's done? <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sick. I got the flu. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, no worries, Drew. Well, you know, since everybody else showed a poster, unfortunately I don't have much to talk about this because I don't know where my notes are, but since everybody else showed a poster, I figured I'd show a poster. I mean, I can show you other things, but that's that's all the advertising. Um, I don't even know a date on this one. So it's getting messed up. It's been sitting in my garage. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask about that earlier. That's a nice... But uh, this is... A, it, it was print, printed in Spain. Spain. It is an original. I have the information on it somewhere. I would just have to uh, look for it. Let me see if I can... I have to back up. It's so big. There we go. Oh, wow. Well. See that all right? Oh, just a uh, nice bullfighting poster. Is there any is there any uh, like artist name on it or anything? Yeah, yeah, it's oh, um, let's see. Uh, I can see it in that. Yeah, it's kind of blurry though. Yeah, like I said, I wish I had the info on it. I wasn't planning on sharing it, but I can't be showing up on my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whose poster is <laughs> my poster is bigger than yours? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know. This one's cool. It's a it came out of an estate. It was sitting in the my attic. Poster, you have your poster. Um, like I said, I'll have to find the the information, but it does have. It is a known artist that did these posters, and this was for a bullfight in Spain, and that's where it was printed. So. There's my uh, my poster contribution. <laughs> there, but, uh, there a date on that? Get into some screen sharing and. Uh, Is there a date on that poster at all? I I've got to look. I don't remember off the top of my head. I wanted to say it was the 30s. Mm -hmm. Um, I I'll have to look for my notes on it. I I did research on it at one time because everything's in Spanish. So. And uh, I'm not very up to date on my Spanish. Oh come on! <laughs> yeah, well, you know. I should be since it's Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> the Spanish language, the Spanish language changes all the time, so you got to keep up with. It. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just depends on what, what what neighborhood you live in. Is that Spanish language is the same all right, so we're going to do a screen share, and we'll just do a, I don't know, round robin through a whole lot of advertisement. I just uh, pulled my Octiva up since I've done tons of ads before, and it's a little easier to see them on a, on a screen share, so yeah. we'll see if this works out. Y'all feel, feel welcome to talk about things or whatever you want to do. Let me know how that looks. Does that look pretty good? Mm hmm. Looks good. So we're just gonna 
Well, I guess I need to lock on me so people can see it, huh? Just yep. sit and roll through them and talk about them and whatever you want to do. So that last one was for a dishwashing company. Hot Point. Yeah, Hot Point. They made uh, made, they made dishwashers. You can see yep. it was built in. Kind of yep. cool. Yeah. You know how that, that changed women's lives completely? The dishwasher, the washing machine. I mean, that, that enabled them to get into the workforce. Once that all was out of the way, they could raise the kids and it changed everything. Right. Angie will love that one right there. Yeah, unfortunately, it's in two pieces. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Even the rock stays better. <laughs> and some of these might repeat because, like I said, this is just this is all from old stock. It was just easier to do this than it was to dig them out of the box, you know. There's one for a Smith Corona. Typing is really so easy. <laughs> There's that guy again, the Texaco guy, ish. Yeah. I, mean, I know he's not, but I mean, he has that. They always have that look. Yeah. They used to wear those little hats too. Yeah. What's that one for? Disney hat maker. Huh. Cool. Old top hats. Yeah, just radio personalities. Zenith. There you go. Dan would like that one. Where is this? Only $59. Wow. Seems expensive. <laughs> High end back in the day, though. Man. Yeah, that's like $500. Yeah. Today's prices. Uh. There you go, Angie. Get you a Ford V8. It's famous. Oh, Kensington. It's kind of fun to see how how far back some of these companies go. And some of these ads had dates written on them. Um, this is January 47. Oh, there you go. Another Ford ad. They should go back to advertising like this. Yeah. yeah. Campbell soup. Serve jellied. <laughs> <laughs> they can get away. I don't think I've ever seen that one. That sounds Served. disgusting. Yeah, it does. <laughs> is it is it, is it gluten free? Because I'm not eating it. <laughs> there, there's a good Lincoln ad. Nothing could be finer. <laughs> yep. Yep. Angie Martin's all excited now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if Rob's watching. Here's a pen ad for an EverSharp. Watch it reach every surface. Dr. West's miracle... What does that say? That's Miracle Flaw. Toft? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> How funny. Hey, Michael Bomberger has a question. Um, so he's got a bunch of old magazines, 50s and the 70s. Is it better to sell them as a whole or cut out the ads? Um, it takes longer to sell them cutting the ads out. If you just want to flip them, leave them together. Let somebody else cut them up. Ads aren't doing as well as they used to. The ads used to really do great. And uh, the last like year to two years, they've started to, to taper off. And I'm not really sure why. I think it's just uh, a law in the market. They'll probably come back at some point, you know. But uh, they're still fun. They're easy to do, you know. 
and usually you got no money in them, you know. So if you need something filler wise, they're they're great, you know. It's just tough because I, I would want to display them, and it's kind. Of, I mean, that's I used to collect comics, and it was kind of along the lines why I stopped because it was just hard to display them. Right. Well, you, that's yeah. it. The, like some people really go over the top. If you get a good ad. I mean, the best thing to do is to go get a dollar store frame and and, and frame it up and, yeah. and sell it like that because people will jump on it. But it's got to be a good ad and presented well. <laughs> it's not economical to do that with all your ads. You know what I mean? No, I hear you. Yeah. So and, and it's like anything else. You got to try to appeal to people. Car ads tend to do well because you know guys own those models of cars. And they buy the ads and they frame them up and they put them in the garage. That thing, huh? You know? Yeah. Is that pretty racy, huh? Yeah. But, uh. I have no idea what that is. Diane tried them, why don't you? Yeah, <laughs> send away now. <laughs> yeah. We we should buy a bunch of these old magazines and try to send away for the uh, the stuff they have listed in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, so I mean, a lot of it has to do with your content, you know. And it just you know, it's like the tobacco ads. Tobacco ads a decade ago were freaking hot. Everybody was buying them. Was that everybody Meidel? was smoking. Was that my? They don't smoke, so now tobacco yeah. ads aren't real popular except the ones that are just like. Over the top, like I always mentioned, the doctor recommended. You know, people yeah. love to buy that ad because it's just it's unbelievable. You know. What about I TV like guides or National Geographic? Any value in those? No, there's only like maybe four or five issues of National Geographic that are valuable, and they're the ones that are related to military. Yeah. With the patches and yep. medals. And, and that, that's about it. That's the only ones I've ever seen. I mean, now you, you find a 13 year old boy, I'm sure there's some other issues <laughs> out there that are, that are you know, valuable to them. Because I can specifically remember uh, in school that there were several issues of the whole series that were missing in the library. <laughs> yeah. You know, and usually it had something to do with that. <laughs> That, that, that lost tribe in uh, Sweden, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be a skinny dip girl. <laughs> skinny dip girl? <laughs> yeah, it's a cologne or perfume. Skinny dip makes a cologne. Yeah. Look at that dude. Look at that dude. Looks like he's stalking. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> 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 Christmas in Geneva. Geneva. Nice. Oh. There we go. There's another there G you for you. The Zenith Wedge. And see if you know if you had like an electronics collector or something like that, and you had right. a guy that owned one of these, he would want this framed up to put with it. You know what I mean? That, that's the people that are really buying these. They're, well, you know, well, they they want to check them out. Well, vinyl's coming back, too, so I'm, I'm sure there's probably an uptick in that. A lot of people are buying yeah. vinyl now instead of uh, downloading music. and. Right. Well, and that's that's the beauty of eBay and stuff is to get this, you know, you can get the ads out there. I had always thought about just creating a website, and that way I can just put them up there and let them sit because they, they'll all sell eventually. You know, yeah. I mean, you just got to get the buyer to to see it. This one's actually pretty cool. All right. You know, the old old digital watches, these were real hot at one point. A lot of them are, are still collectible today, too. Yeah. They have value. Well, and this was back when Seiko was actually worth something. Yeah. More to choose on a low tar cigarette than just picking a number. <laughs> you, just don't, you just don't see like today cigarette advertisements. I don't think they're legally allowed to anymore, right? Uh, yeah, I, I still see them periodically in certain yeah. stuff. 
Well, I guess it depends on the magazine, what the, the content of the magazine is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if it's in high time. I was going to say, yeah. I, that's the first thing that came to my mind was high times. <laughs> yeah. See, now, now, look at the way they're advertising this. That's sexual yeah. harassment. Yep. Gee, your hair smells terrific. Yeah. Uh. You can go straight to the principal's office. <laughs> It's funny because in the alcohol genre, for a long time, hard alcohol was illegal to advertise, whereas beer and wine was not. Right. And then cigarettes wow. definitely had its day, and then they just didn't. You know, as an as a as a as a program or something you were putting out on on TV. You know, you didn't want to be associated with something that was going to give people cancer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, eventually, before, they were all over it, but... I, I wonder if the liquor, if that had anything to do with, you know, even the repeal of Prohibition, if there was some kind of law that, you know, where you, where you weren't allowed to advertise hard liquor. No, I, I, think, that was, I think that was later. I'm nah. almost going to want to say that that might have been because of women and... Uh, against drunk driving and stuff. Oh, really? Okay. All right. I mean, I, I, I could be wrong, but I think they stopped showing alcohol, hard alcohol, after the 60s. Okay. I didn't know if it was something that, you know, because of Prohibition, obviously not immediately after, but might have been kind of something along the lines with that, and they just kind of got, well, here, here's my answer right there, because... <laughs> Look at that. That's, nice <laughs> That's pretty All cool. dressed up for the holidays. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll just keep y'all keep just keep chatting. I'm just gonna keep scrolling. Trust me, I'm not gonna run out. <laughs> Eisenhower's General Lee, huh? Mm. Oh, uh, I love the I, I love the toothpaste uh, containers uh, or the toothbrush containers. They're pretty yeah, cool. The yeah, that was, just, that was the second one we saw like that. Yeah. They could only get four boys to JV, said the uh, heck with her golf clubs. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All righty. I'm sure it's something sexist, so we'll move on. <laughs> I never knew. I never knew why the New Yorker was such a popular magazine. I always looked at it and got, "What the What the hell is that?" You know, it's just, <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? I mean, none, none of these cartoons are funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a There's a Victrola. There you go. What year is this? Um, thirty nine. Uh, thirty nine. Three hundred fifty five bucks. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you can get the records for thirty five cents. Hey. Psychoanalysis op optimocletus sidere. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I think he messed up that middle word there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Ooh. Apparently, that, that was uh, talking on the phone there. Oh. There you go. Yeah, a piece of an ad. There's a second page. I think he showed the first page earlier. Yeah. I have no idea. Star of the office. Vice Roy. Uh, they even make that. There's 20,000 filters in every place. <laughs> <story. laughs> they misplayed, misspelled that. It should have been fibers. Push button. Wow. Yeah. Uh, man. No. Huh. Lavish gift. Really lavish, lovely gifts. So funny. Go, go on a cruise. I think we'll switch to another genre here in a second. There's one for Boeing. All right, let's see what we got over here. Oh, there's an all-fluid drive belongs to Dodge. Let's see if I can scroll in a little. Oh, I don't remember what else was. Yeah, I think this one was full of junk. Hold on. There we go. Do some it cigarette is. ads. Because I'd never smoke a boring <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> Any 
scroll out so you can actually see these. Paint by numbers? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you got jammed in the carpool with your soft pack. Try to uh, oh. hard pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This is from 75. Try our new hard pack. <laughs> And see, even some of these newer ads from the 70s and 80s and 90s are, are doing better than some of the older ones because of the baby boomers. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's becoming their nostalgia now, you know what I mean? Things like this, you know, like, you know, somebody's like, man, I had one of those TVs. That kind of thing, you know? Magnavox. Your cigarette rot line reads, they satisfy. <laughs> Just a few. That's kind of cool. Little, uh, little fortune teller there, palm reader. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Shaving oddities. <laughs> oh, uh, damn, I like this one. <laughs> yeah, gem razor blades. Shave of death. <laughs> Oh, man. These are cool. Looks like the old Ripley's Believe It or Not uh, illustrations. Yeah. Fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. I always find it funny when they say safety razors. <laughs> it's almost like an <laughs> a, a oxymoron. There we go. There's some Pontiacs. You'd Good be happy with it. Well, yeah, look at all the room in the back seat. Shoot. Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, you Paul. girls know the importance of design, modern design. <laughs> Paul Mall. There's some more soup. Apparently, it's warm in this picture. Yeah. <laughs> no, more, no more gelled soup. <laughs> so, the, gel, the jelly goodness. <laughs> oh, here we go. Cool. The long uh, yeah. smoke, the more you like, cool long. <laughs> Cool. They realize they got the wrong person. In well, there, you right? can tell these are the 70s because you can see the uh, the health warnings. Uh, oh, yeah. Started uh, to and the clothes. That I mean. was Richard Nixon. I, I have, actually, to, I, I, I have, have a to dig through, but I have some of the real old ones that don't have the health warnings. <laughs> We probably got people watching that remember these ads. There was a couple in there. Um, I think Angie Martin remembered that Avon ad. Yeah, my cigarette has two jobs. <laughs> I like how they're. I like how they're pushing the low tar and nicotine. Like you know, now they're really trying to catch the health groups and say, oh, it's okay. We're low tar. We're low nicotine. Yeah. Here's, uh, uh, here's for all our land camera nuts. Uh, there you go. SX70 land camera. Max. Max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gee, I wonder where they're going with that ad. <laughs> Check that yeah, one. Out. That's an awesome one. You don't Check see trees like that anymore. I don't know. Where'd Drew go? That's from his neck of the woods. That's more of my area. Giant redwoods and stuff. That's just twenty minutes away. Actually, even further up north too. They got super huge ones. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I should go up to the drive-through redwood tree and take a video of it. Hey, I've got a I got a ding in the fender of my F two fifty from the drive-through. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, I didn't fit. Man. I tried. I attempted it. <laughs> I attempted it all the way until it dinged my fender. <laughs> oh man! Plowing ahead despite his heart attack. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Oh man! Okay, I thought it was actually for John Deere. I was like, "That's pretty." Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Got mashed in the elevator with your soft. <laughs> oh, those are awesome. <laughs> Valentine's good taste is why you buy it. Yeah. <laughs> China, this way, please. This is from 47. Oh, wow. American president lines. <laughs> uh -huh. That was the 
Uh, the travel agency. Is that love funny? the camel and drive. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Nice. That's pretty cool, Chevy Ann. Showing him out fly fishing. Driving by. He must have got back into the 40s. Yeah. See, there's no health warnings. But a green pack would put it before 1940. Yeah. And they're mentioning um, the camel and the camel ads. That'd be more like the late 70s, huh? Yeah, Camel was in the Camel ads till the 90s. Because I can remember collecting Joe, Joe Camel shit when I was a kid. It worked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I smoked Camels until 2000. Hey, God. Stupid freaking yeah. people. No, the, the, the child messages worked because I smoked Camels till 2012. <laughs> Let me tell you how I chose my second refrigerator. What was his name? <laughs> <laughs> See, but they also they also run on bottled gas, tank gas, or kerosene. Oh, oh wow! So safe. <laughs> <laughs> Very outdated conventional low tar cigarettes. Enriched flavor technology matches the taste of cigarettes having 60% more tar. <laughs> oh, wow. Man. There's the there cool one. That's a nice one. Too bad they wrote on it. That sucks. Some of them, it, you can't get it off either. But that one's from 77. Uh -huh. That's everybody's favorite uh, rainbow, rainbow Polaroid camera. Yeah. The Terratin Low Tars. I've never even heard of those. <laughs> Both only 8 milligrams. Yeah, only 8 tar. milligrams. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, they're telling you there's tar in it. Come on, people. <laughs> what, what do we got here? I demand two things for my cigarette. Uh oh, I forget. Low tar nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la. Tiffany and Company. Ah, there you go. Seventy-five. Advertising one of their decanters. Why is this cigarette <laughs> selling with no advertising? And it's hard to come. Yeah, here's by. an average. Here's an advertisement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's because they're tall. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's low tar and not low taste. <laughs> <laughs> right off your Christmas gift giving problems this easy money saving way. <laughs> there you go. You got you want to you want to send, send that one in. How much was Newsweek at the time? <laughs> uh, save your trouble. You save five dollars. Troubles of shopping, wrapping, delivering, and save five dollars on every gift as well. <laughs> oh, it doesn't even say. Just says five dollars off each one or something. Yeah. Send it anyway. There's a price. <laughs> yeah. They'd probably accept oh, it. It's Georgia. twenty-one dollars instead of the regular twenty-six dollars. Oh, oh there you go. All right. what's the price now, though? <laughs> Let's see. I have no idea. Do they even make a paper version of Newsweek anymore? <laughs> probably. <laughs> why is Tarrington better? Charcoal is why. <laughs> <laughs> Use to freshen <laughs> the air and make water and other beverages taste better. Oh, it's my word. It's for cigarette smoke, too. <laughs> N Newsweek, uh, is a, New Newsweek is $100 a year for anybody who's oh, in. Wow. Wow. No matter how far you go, you'll never be far from a great whiskey sour. <laughs> there you go. There's some photoshopping for you. Looks like Ron Burgundy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drew's just chilling, man. He's enjoying this. 
<laughs> Ghouls. Roadside hotels. He's, re he's relaxing. He's relaxing because all of his cigarettes are low tar. He's enjoying them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is there an answer to the smoking question? <laughs> Vantage mental. <laughs> I love these. Oh, I've got no idea what that is. It's kind of scary. Just for good measure, there's two. If you aren't getting more, you're getting less. Less tar. <laughs> is your cigarette measure up? <laughs> the, the first, first 120, 120 yeah. cigarette. <laughs> sure sounds like a big one. She said. Oh, hey. man. There we go. The proud smoke and two tall tastes. <laughs> oh man, it's I all tall. Tall is the sequoia, isn't it? Well, yeah. let's walk through the clean air and smoke some cigarettes. <laughs> I'm burning, <laughs> burn the sequoias yeah. down while you're at it. <laughs> There's some dodge. Look at the top hats in the back. How funny! Yeah, the proud smoke. Uh. Must have been a must have been a packet of cigarette advertisements. I know my taste. Check out the handlebar. Uh, <laughs> I'm envious. Sweet stash. That is a good looking stash. Seventies <laughs> porno like, stash. Like he drives a van and carries an axe. <laughs> <laughs> that turf builder from 76. Max, I could take you anywhere. Uh-huh. IBM, IBM Series 3, uh, copy the duplicator. That's the size of that thing, man, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's Model 10 and Model 20. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, immediately available at all locations. Really? <laughs> be like a whole room just for it. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no idea. New Kent Golden Lights. Ooh. The Jungle Gym Schmirnoff ad. <laughs> You don't start with true. You can change. You change to true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're expecting a few extra people for dinner tonight. Hmm. I have no idea what that means. Got to be cigarette related. <laughs> <laughs> the L and M moment. Oh, Prudential Life Insurance. <laughs> he just won $25,000, poured a bucket of champagne over his head. He's not going to follow all of that with a boring, boring. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, excitement is now taste. <laughs> God. Yeah, I don't think he's worried about the taste of the girl laying all over him like that. <laughs> Not a cigarette, Lemon anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Lemon twist. <laughs> oh, man, that doesn't sound good at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Think about it. Doesn't <laughs> the it all have to be of the true pack doesn't convince you the front will. <laughs> uh, there we go. There's a seventy one Buick. Big old boat. Look at that. Yeah, I was gonna say that is a boat of a car. <laughs> Looking good though. Yep. Be fun to drive. Maybe Maryland one hundred time. Look at that pack. That pack's pretty cool. Had a hunting and stuff. How do you hunting? Oh, yeah. All that. Maryland. 100. 
I bet you if you could find a pack of those, it's probably collectible. Probably, yeah. It looks like it goes all the way around, dude. Something from DuPont. Light taste. <laughs> That's what the Monopoly. None of, none of you guys smoke cigarettes, do you? I do. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. What's your brand? <laughs> uh, American Spirit. Uh, Hipster cigarettes. Uh, how much? Uh, no. Yeah, how much that's how called. Much how, much, how much do they cost? Uh, it's like seven dollars a pack. Woo! I, know, I can remember buying them when they were like a dollar fifty a pack. Going, to, I remember going down to the store and buying my parents' cigarettes, and nobody carding me when I was probably like ten years old. <laughs> and it was like you know dollar fifty a pack. That Dodge Colt. <laughs> yeah, look at that. How did you put so much in such a little car? Look at that. It's got carpeting, power brakes, a locking gas cap. Whoa. Whoa. 33 <laughs> miles per gallon. Mind blown. <laughs> look at that. It That's even an adjustable steering column. It was definitely 70s because the, after the, uh, the big uh, gasoline crunch during the Carter thing, uh, I think yeah. was, people were siphoning gas out of people's gas tanks right uh, and left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about this? Like camping equipment, not included. Prices <laughs> start at $3,175. Oh, wow. Again, it's like probably, I don't know, that car today would be $25,000. I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much... You can pretty much time this by ten. I wonder yeah. what uh, I wonder what Elena's doing, smoking cigarettes and playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. There's similarities, weren't there? Yeah. Oh. Virginia Slims. Huh. Virginia Salem Lights. Do you remember? Do you remember tie dye? You used to get that writ dye and then put rubber bands around your T-shirts and dip parts mm -hmm. in it and, and make these big sunbursts and crazy colors. I love tie dye. That was cool. I was hoping that there were some other ads in here, but I must have clicked on a. Which King's Ransom is lost at sea. Right. You see, yeah. <laughs> so have, let me see what's in this one, because I'm getting tired of cigarettes. <laughs> I promise that wasn't the intent. <laughs> this is a big advertisement uh, for cigarettes. <laughs> hey, I, I feel like I need to go buy a pack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> we get back into here. Let's see what we got. These are the older ones. Please send me ten cents worth of electricity <laughs> today. Just our vacuum getting ready. Oh, funny. Yep. Wait, go back to that. What was that? Can you go back to the or the uh, ten cents. So, what is it for exactly? Um, is this for an electric company? Companies under American Business Management. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm just wondering if it's today, like you know, nowadays you can buy your own electric electricity through you know, pick your vendor instead of going through. There we go. Where there's life, there's Bud. Ah. Seven Budweiser advertisement. There you go. Fifty-seven, as that said. So, yeah. yeah. Black magic to protect costly gears. I wonder if they're going to let cannabis advertise on TV anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't you ever watch that 70s show? Yeah. <laughs> Baylor Sweetheart, Pontiac Division of General Motors. It's a cool ad. <laughs> it's time we took him a year hammer mill paper. 
America is smoking more. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, look at all the ads. Yeah, all the, all the... <laughs> I mean, not only that, you got a kid advertising for. Yeah, okay, yeah, you see go, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be. This is a uh, Times Magazine, January eighteenth, nineteen forty three. Wow. Far more Americans are wisely smoking Philip Morris. <laughs> wow! Here you go. There's one. Of, this is actually one of the doctor ones. Doctors report in medical journals: every case of irritation of nose or throat due to smoking cleared up completely or definitely improved when smokers changed to Philip Morris. Huh. Wow. Well. No claim is made of any curative power in Philip Morris, but this evidence clearly proves Philip Morris uh, far less irritating for nose and throat, therefore better for you. Try them. <laughs> oh, man. That's... <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh. <laughs> uh, rubber cup. At first, I thought it was some kind of shaggy dog or something. Yeah. Luckily, the plane I hated, returned safely. Luckily, I hated cigarettes. I never smoked them. I just, I hate. I think you're either. I don't know. I think some people. I mean, obviously, with look at these ads. I mean, it's incredible how many people smoked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Daddy knows. <laughs> well, well, you got to figure in the um. During World War II, that was part of every ration pack. It was yeah. cigarettes. So exactly. you had a lot of GIs that just never smoked before, but picked it up during the war, and you know, yeah, it, it wasn't looked at as, as a health concern at the time. It wasn't until yeah. you know Nixon started, you know, pushing for the uh, Surgeon General's warning to be put on a label, and that wasn't until you know 60s, 70s. So. And right. even then, even then, it didn't matter. People weren't looking at it like that. It wasn't until much later that it, people started I mean, seeing the repercussions from it. It definitely has a sedative effect. And if you're out in the uh, in, in 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 the wartime and you're in the jungle or you're fighting, you need to you need to de-stress. Yeah. Yeah. And the time, like you said, the time they would wait around, there would just be nothing to do, and mm -hmm. that's what guys would do while well, a smoke break. Yeah, I, I love a lot of wartime advertisement. I wish I could just keep it all, but there's so much of it out there, you know. Yeah, that's a nice one right here, Bill. Yeah, tonight's lesson for Japs, subtracting zeros. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. That just is. Great wartime messages, you know. Buick Division of General Motors. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of these car makers, I mean, they, they built stuff for the war. I mean, everybody built stuff for the war at that time, you know? So you had, a, you know, Chrysler, Buick, you know, everybody was building different pieces and parts. So, and this was all their advertisement, trying to, you know, drum up war bonds and, and money for the war effort, you know? You guys are familiar with uh, the Second World War, we interred the Japanese into concentration camps. Yes. Yeah, there was an article today. There was supposed to be a big uh, auction uh, of some internment items from the Japanese, the, the internment camps, and uh, actually George Takei helped. Uh, you know, because his family was actually, uh, or he was in an internment camp, as was his family, and he helped to stop the auction from happening. Um, so it was kind of, you know, akin to. I wouldn't. Maybe not at the level of a concentration camp, but definitely along that the same lines. And you know, for somebody to try and sell something out of there is kind of a bit disrespectful. Yeah. Who's tr who's trying to sell what? Yeah, there was an auction. Uh, I, I guess it was an auction house was trying to sell some items that belonged to or that came out of a internment camp, a Japanese internment mm -hmm. camp. Mm -hmm. And That's yeah, there was awesome, supposed to be, right? yeah, there was supposed to be an auction that was supposed to happen, and they, George Takei was able to help stop it. Uh, it's happening. Yeah. That last one yeah. was super cool. Oh yeah. look, Monsanto can, can chemicals. Shot see that? to the press. Yeah. Nice deep landing. 
I don't watch television anymore because there's too much advertising. I mean, every every you know, it's getting worse. Too. It's crazy. It's like ten commercials in a row, and then you just always ah, I just can't stand it. Yeah, you get like ten, fifteen minutes in a hour show. It seems like yeah. You 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 can realize how you know TV is di a dying a dying media because of that. We want to be able to watch what we want to watch when we want to watch it, you know? There, there we go. There's a camel advertisement a with uh... Oh, great. Now it's going to... Civil Air Patrol. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Uh, with a female Civil Air Patrol. The T-Zone. Cigarettes are judged. They have, <laughs> it's camels for me, they have a rich, full flavor and an extra mildness that's so easy on my throat. <laughs> Find the Surgeon General. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I'm sure there's Doctor Recommended in there somewhere. There's old Schlitz advertisement. Ah, uh, Schlitz, molly. Hey, they can show all you all this stuff that's going to kill you, but, you know, a little bit of sex, no, we can't show any of that. No, no, no. <laughs> caveat. You know? <laughs> well, that's, that's just like the drinking time. age in the military. Here's a gun. I want you to go kill people, and you might possibly get killed yourself, but uh, no, you cannot have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> beer is bad. Killing people, good. <laughs> I smoke K. Woody. Hey, Woody Breyer. Okay, Woody. <laughs> Buy war bonds. <laughs> what, was, what was the theory behind war bonds? You, you'd buy the bonds and it would fund the war, and then later on they would appreciate the government if the government won. Yeah, they, they basically <laughs> pay you. They pay you interest on them. Yeah. And it worked. I mean, it funded the war, and then, you know, after the economy's all spun up from the war, so the economy's doing good, and they can pay the interest back on the bond. Yep. And we all know uh, war is a big money maker. Yep. For any anybody to be involved. Oh, there you go. That's a nice one. Yeah, I've always liked this one. This is Stalin, Stalin oh, yeah. was saying, don't, don't say I didn't tell you. People forget that the Russians were our allies during World War II. They didn't become a an enemy until after. There That's you a cool go. one. Mock on the Rhine. Well, it looks like we're getting to that time. We're going to have to wrap it up, huh? Uh, yep. I knew I had enough advertisement to get us through. <laughs> but it is just a couple folders, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, you got volumes and boxes and boxes. Oh, man. Stray for beware. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, that one's a cool one. Don Q rum. <laughs> Puerto Rican rum. Funny, also, and you know, another thing that's being so affected is these magazines. You know, there's sooner or later there will not be any magazine. They yeah. won't no, they they've talked about that, but what's funny is is that it's still uh, um a pretty you know viable business, believe it or not. Well, I take for instance, my friend works for uh, I won't mention the the magazine, but. Uh, a major magazine selling advertise, advertising, and that's his that's his gig, and his his sales have gone down every year for the last three or four years, and he feels that he's just he's gonna probably have to get out of the business because they're gonna let him go, <laughs> right? Because uh, you know they need to bring in the revenue and if you're not selling the ad space it's not paying for the magazine I still don't know how some of these things are hang hanging on you know that's a nice one right there uh, that one's cool uh, so we'll end it with that one very cool 
All right. So, well, hey, that was the uh, Collector's Catacomb number 17. If you want to be on the Collector's Catacomb and share your collection or share some knowledge or share, share some history, you know, what have you, go ahead and, and contact me either through YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Uh, make sure you check out the Toadcast tomorrow night, all the other shows that are going on throughout the week, and catch us next Thursday at 9.30 p.m. We'll be here with uh, who knows what, but it should be fun. It should be collectible. So uh, till next time, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, my panel, for being here tonight and sharing your advertisement. And we'll see you all next week. <laughs>